Thanks to everyone for coming out today uh, to hear me speak, and thanks to everyone who went over and got a burger or a box of fries from our stand. Uh, we really appreciate it. And to the organizers for putting this together. I think it's an absolutely incredible event and so inspiring to see it growing every single year. To quote Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can help change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. I find this incredibly inspiring as a quote, and I think it's one of the things that drives me every day, considering that we are a small group in the bigger world, um, in a non-vegan world, trying to change the status quo. Today I'm going to share with you our story and how we went from piggeries to veggies, and uh, a few little lessons that I learned along the way growing up as a vegetarian in Africa, where vegetarianism certainly wasn't uh, common. My life has been an extraordinary string of what I'd like to call adventures. We grew up in a humble home, and when I say humble, it was really just a shack with four walls, a tin roof, there were no partitioning walls in the house, and there was no running water. So my mum and dad used to go down every day to the river at the bottom of our property and fetch water in 25-liter drums and bring it up to the house, and that's what we used for washing. You see, my dad, Wally Fry, was a goat farmer by trade, and my mum taught at the local village school. She was a teacher. I remember as the goats were shipped off for slaughter, um, some with names and others nameless. I, was, I had an inquiring mind as a young child, and I questioned everything. I used to say to my dad, a drumstick? You play the drums with that. What is this? And he would tell me it was a chicken's leg, and I would be so horrified. Um, I was just a born vegetarian, and that was that. Chose not to eat meat. Little did I know how tough this would be growing up in a predominantly meat-eating country like South Africa and uh, the difficulties I would face going through life. My dad wasn't a vegetarian, and he tried over and over to get me to eat the meat on my plate to no avail. Lucky I had my mum by my side because she too was a vegetarian, and with two Veggie woman in one house, he had no chance. So the one lesson I learned as a young girl about the age of five, that a goat with a name is a pet, and one without is food. Dad left the goat farming trade and started a business building houses and constructing uh, factories and, and small, small um, apartment blocks. We moved off the farm and into the city, and life took a turn. We, we became familiar with building sites, and I remember uh, taking wooden planks and placing them over sand, sandbags and bricks and using them as seesaws. You see, being an entrepreneur means that work and play and family are all rolled into one, so the family always get involved. And then there was one day that changed everything again for us. Dad had just been to inspect a piggery, which he had built, he was actually very proud of us. It was a 4,000 sour piggery. And he arrived home after going to inspect it. And after taking his muddy boots off of the door and walking into the house, he announced that he too was never going to eat meat again. So our home and our family have always had a big heart, a huge work ethic, and, uh, and we... We are now, you know, we were now at this stage a family of vegetarians in South Africa. My folks always believed that you should follow your dreams and your passion. Um, work was not about money, ever. And you should leave a positive mark in the world. They also believed in good old-fashioned hard work and striving for perfectionism in everything that you did. Conversations at the dinner table always included, you know, the trivial school day report backs and then morality the state of the world, and then an update on the latest plant-based sausage recipe they managed to crack that day. You see, Dad had decided that he was going to start making alternatives just for the family and a couple of friends, so meat alternatives like sausages and burgers. He had no food knowledge, and he was not a chef, so we used very basic kitchen equipment like a food processor, the oven. We even had a cappuccino machine because we needed the steam nozzle to steam the product. And then we would cook them in, you know, cooking pots with thermometers. And um, 
when the queue of friends at the gate became too long to continue to supply out of our cooking pot, he decided to up the ante. So he closed his construction business and he went off to see a local retailer in South Africa. So when he sat down, he had all of his sausages on a tray and the retailer, you know, the buyer said, oh, we don't, we don't taste at these meetings, we only talk commercials. And he was like, oh, I'm not here to talk commercials, I'm here to talk about vegan food. And uh, the guy obliged and he tasted the sausages and he was so blown away that he called everybody from the offices. He said, called all of his staff and he said, come and try these products, it's absolutely amazing. So my dad left that day with a listing for fries in 400 stores in South Africa without talking commercials. So it was pretty game changing for us. Here we were with our, our cooking pots and our food processor. Now we were gonna supply the whole of South Africa with these products that we had no idea how to make on a, you know, on a, on a bigger scale. So then began, began a mad rush, you know, and life changed again. It became about um, uh, riding on conveyor belts and building houses made out of pallets and tasting and tasting again, just to be sure. I remember my mum and dad worked tirelessly day in and day out, night in and night out. Navigating the world as a vegetarian in a meat-eating country was tough. At school, I faced so much criticism, and I thought that the best way to change people was just to take them head on, just to fight with them. So I was always at loggerheads with someone, and I certainly wasn't popular. I knew I was right, I just had to get someone to hear me out, and no one seems to want to do that. My, compassion for pa my passion for compassion just continued to burn strong, so I had to figure a way to get people to listen to me. I remember, this is a true story, I was at Bible study, and um, the teacher arranged a prayer group to lay their hands on me and to pray for my sins, because I wasn't eating meat. And the Bible said that we had dominion over the animals, and therefore we should eat them. And... Uh, you know, the, all my friends came and they laid their hands on me and prayed for me that I would change. At this stage, I had started karate and I was now competing at quite a high level, representing my country as a junior for 10 years and then as a senior for another 10 years. And in my final year of school, I won the junior world championships. And this was a game changer because suddenly people started asking me about what I ate. They were actually now interested now, what is it that you eat? Because we want to do what you do. So I learned another lesson. In order to advocate for change effectively, you need to lead by example. And, and you need to take action, and you need to have people want to follow you and want to do the things that you do. Fries was so much a part of my life that when I left school, I went on to study marketing. And uh, I remember finishing my degree, and I walked up to my dad, and I said, Dad, I'm just dying to work for you. I want to start the marketing department. And he wasn't much of a believer in marketing. So um, he gave me a mop cap and gum boots and a computer. And he said, you're going to go off to the pre-weighing warehouse and you're going to manage the staff at the pre-weighing warehouse where we met, weighed all the spices. So off I went and I sat at my upcycled pallet desk with my computer and my mop cap on, smelling of burger patties every single day. It was at this desk that something extraordinary happened. This guy walked into my office, a salesman. And as he walked in, I recognized him as a previous teen crush of mine. His name was Richard. He was this big, strong, you know, athletic guy. And he had been a professional rugby player, so he was quite well known in, you know, in, in Durban, where I come from. And I was just, you know, in awe. And he came in, and he was trying to sell me something. And we ended up sitting having a chat. Now you can imagine I was there just covered in dust with my mop cap on, and I don't know what he saw in me, but he asked me out on a date. You know, even though I smelled of burgers, he, he still asked me out on a date. But we had so much in common um, with, with our interest in sports and uh, nutrition. We both love surfing, we love the outdoors, we love adventure. So, you know, we started dating, but there was one sticking point. Rich was a professional hunter. So... In the weekends, he actually shot animals. Like that was, that's how he made money. And uh, this is when my dilemma had begun because I was no, now totally taken with this guy. But, you know, how were two people with such different opinions on animals actually gonna 
live together under one roof. It was, it was really tough. But I figured that anyone who was actually eating meat or dairy was no better than someone who was killing an animal. Because if we're truly anti-speciesist, then we should actually accept that it's all the same. It is all equal. So one is no better than the other. So Rich was a no ordinary omni. He was a three meats and one veg kind of guy with a strong will to boot. So I decided uh, to, you know, they say you should never change the person that you marry, but I decided that I was going to do just that. I was going to take it on myself. I saw it as a personal challenge to change him. Um, so I devised this plan that I was going to cook amazing vegan food every night. I was going to put so much effort into my cooking that he, that he wouldn't even know that he wasn't eating meat. So I, thank God for fries. because I was cooking up a storm with fries products. And after a month had passed, he said to me, you know, I just feel so amazing. My heart burns gone. My training is just so much better. And then I proudly announced to him that he had been a vegan for a month. <laughs> so the, the one lesson I learned is that if you want to advocate for change, don't marry or date a vegan. Find one that isn't and work hard to change them. Find common ground and respect that they are compassionate humans but have been conditioned to choose the food they choose. The other lesson was that your taste buds are so powerful. So if you can change someone and, you can, and they can taste great tasting vegan food, and bear in mind that the taste buds are a vegan, of a vegan are different from the taste buds of a meat eater. So keep it, you know, use, use meat alternatives. Use those kinds of products to showcase how great tasting vegan food can be. And then, um, and then usually you have a much more open audience to your message. I can proudly say that Rich... Is, uh, owns a CrossFit box in Noosa. He has about 120 members of his gym, and about 70% of them have moved from paleo to plant-based diet. So we've, we're seeing incredible change in, in the fitness industry. Then came children. <laughs> every mom understands every mom, right? I mean, we are all, we can be found with black rings under our eyes, running on caffeine, we forgetful, moody, confused. We respond in short grunts and can often be found wandering aimlessly because we forgot what we were doing. And then on top, of, on top of this, we're trying to be a chef extraordinaire, a best friend, a hairdresser, an events planner, a monster slayer, an anthropologist. And then on top of all of this, we're still trying to be conscious moms who actually read food labels and who, go, and who go onto the internet searching for the quickest morsel that can be prepared in under one minute. And we subscribe to minimalism, meditation, and veganism. So are there any moms out there? Any moms, put your hands up. We are incredible AF. So after a healthy pregnancy, I gave birth to a little boy, um, Josh. And... Uh, I had plenty of milk, healthy pregnancy, plenty of milk. I actually have had an oversupply, so I was donating to the HIV center for the babies at the HIV center. So really healthy. Um, and then he started on solids. And Rich believed that he should eat meat until such time that he could choose for himself. I managed to convince him that Josh was quite happy on his pureed fruits and veg. And when he got to two, I had this strategic plan that I put into place. We were sitting at the dinner table, and I decided to ask Josh a few simple questions. So I said, my boy, do we eat potatoes? And he said, yes, of course we eat potatoes. And I said, and what about carrots? Do we eat carrots? And he said, yes, we eat carrots. And I said, apples? Oh, mom, of course we eat apples. I said, what about chickens? Do we eat chickens? And he was like, chickens? No, we don't eat chickens. I said, how about pigs? Do we eat pigs? He said, no, of course we don't eat pigs. So, settled. I believed he had chosen to be a vegetarian. So, the one other lesson that I learned is children are born with compassion. And when they are told exactly what they're eating, they will naturally choose plant-based foods over animal products. 
The other thing that I've learned as a mom with children at school is that you need to have some gray area. You cannot aim for perfection with your children. And you can't take it upon yourself or punish yourself if they go out into the world and order Hawaiian pizza when they're with their friends. You have to allow it to be that way and control their diet within your own home. Don't be over prescriptive and they will naturally choose, they will naturally start making the same choices that you, that you choose in your home. So we are now a plant-based family thriving on plants. I continue to compete in karate and this year placed first at the Australian Open. So I'm still competitive. I'm the director at the Frau Family Food Co. I write a blog in my spare time. It's called The Seed Blog, where I share my really quick, easy to cook recipes for, for kids and families. I love surfing, I love travel, and I love adventure. I've dedicated my life to inspiring people to change to a plant-based diet, marketing the vegan brand, running Meat Free Mondays in Australia and South Africa, and speaking to audiences around the world on plant-based nutrition, advocacy, and in this time, I have w I've learned one major lesson. What goes into your mouth is less important than what comes out of it. So I'll say that again, what goes into your mouth is less important than what comes out of it. Lead by action and let go of the label. You are so much more than just being a vegan. Just live your life. Go out there and live your life and other people will follow you. Inspire others by your actions. And when you think that veganism is the end goal or the badge or the, per the level of you know, being perfect, remember that the world is imperfect. And if this is exactly what we are trying to achieve, we are going to be let down. So we need to celebrate the small steps that people take towards a more compassionate life. People do nothing when they're expected to do everything. And remember that perfection is the enemy to advocacy. Never stop learning because knowledge is power and you need knowledge when you speak to people. My go-to foods are Buddha bowls, smoothie bowls, Thai green curries, and the kids love Mexican. We also eat fries, probably at least once a day, I would say we eat our own products. Um, our diet is not perfect. But it, the fact that it's imperfect makes it so much more achievable for anyone else that meets us. They say, well, I can do what you guys do, and then they do. My go-to for recipes and inspiration, well, fries have some incredible e free e-cookbooks online. Um, everything from Halloween recipes to plants on fire, lunchbox ideas for kids. I love the book Elsa's Wholesome Life, some beautiful recipes in there and the Animals Australia cookbook, Taste for Life. Go to blogs, um, if any of you have been onto Oshi Glows or Vegan Richer, some awesome inspiration there. And podcasts, uh, Dr. Michael Greger, Nutrition Facts, Rich Roll, and uh, Colleen Patrick Goodrow, uh, Food for Thoughts. Also someone really inspirational and just always a great message. Re recipes are a great way to feel inspired and to learn about a whole variety of foods that you might not have known about before. I think they're an investment, so invest in them. My dream is to live in a world free from cruelty, where there is ample food for everyone, where wildlife and nature is thriving, and people are living long, healthy lives. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Do you want to do this now? Yeah, there, take those. Thank you. I know that we have a little bit of time before um, James comes up on the stage. So I wanted to open uh, questions to the audience um, in the meantime. If you have a question, I'm going to give you one of these stickers and you can go up and get a free box of fries. So um, don't be shy. <laughs> a little bit of an incentive. Um, so I think Dave, Dave is going to walk around with a roaming mic. And uh, if you have a question, just put your hand up. Dave, you want to take these? Any questions for Tammy, folks? I've got free food from Fries. Would you like, have you got a question? Is there any enhancer that you put in? The, Excuse yeah, me? The fries? Are there any? Any enhancer like MSG and things like that? No, Fries is free of MSG. Remember, we, uh, the food that we make is for ourselves Sorry. and our children. Tammy, so she just was wondering about enhancers as well. Any kind of flavor no. enhancers? Is that what you're talking about? No. Yeah. No flavor enhancers. There you go. That's the good news. Yes, sir. You got a question too? 
Oh, here they go. Take that and then take this. When you use the oil to, fu uh, to fry, are they using the oil has been recycled? Like you use it over and over again? Or what um, do you Yeah. You can reuse oil, but to a certain point, right? So um, you have to test it. And at a certain point, you have to change the oil. So we follow that system. How many times, how many times would you suggest to use the oil to, to over and over again? How, long, how many it, times? It depends. The fryers work all day, so it depends. It works on batches, and it's, it's quite difficult to give you an exact answer. Every product is different. The crumbed products, um, obviously the oil, you can't use it as much. Um, the uh, products with turmeric in them, the oil changes color, so you have to change it you know, at a different time, so there's, uh, the, it's a hard question to answer directly. Yeah, thank you, Tammy. Has that been helpful, sir? Are you, are you planning on, yes, yes, another question. Are you planning on frying, frying food, sir? Yeah, 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 great. Good one, good one. There you go. That's, that's some free fries food for you. Yes, your question? Thank you. I'm just wondering if you've got any gluten-free fries. Um, we actually, my niece, Isabella, um, is celiac. So we decided to develop some products, especially for her, because she couldn't eat some of the fries products. So we launched um, the gluten-free nuggets and the chicken-style burger, which you can find in Coles and Woolworths. So two gluten-free products at this stage. Awesome, cool. Thank Dave, yes. there's a question over here. Yeah, oh, there's, yes, there's one right here real quick. We'll do this one. Thank you, Sammy. Oh, she needs me? Okay. Hello, how are you? Are fries available nationwide? Yes, uh, Coles and Woolworths nationwide and at uh, independent stores. So, um, you know, we try and, we've moved over here as a family to try and establish the independent trade. Um, so we would really appreciate anyone who went into a store that doesn't have it just to request it. And uh, usually consumer pressure is a lot more effective than supplier pressure. So. Thank you, Tammy. Is that, yeah, that's great. That was, a good, that was an easy question, that one. Um, was there another question over here somewhere? Yes, mate. How are you? There you go. Yeah, I'm just wondering, is it because it's a boutique product that most of these, I guess, meat substitutes are expensive, or is it the actual process in which you need to, to make them more expensive? Um, I, I don't consider fries expensive, considering it's about five ninety nine for a box. However, um, when you buy non-GM soy, and you have to uh, identity preserve the soy from the place that it's grown, because GM is very easy to cross-contaminate, um, there is a much higher cost of buying that soy. It costs about four times the price of genetically modified soy. And then of course, all the ingredients that we grow, all the natural ingredients are grown on farms around us. So we pay a premium and we, actually one of our values that's up on our wall at Fry's is principles before profits. And I think we're probably one of the very few companies in the world that can say that. We choose the ingredients because of the quality of the ingredients and because of the fact that it's sustainable or uh, or, or um, complies with our ethics and values as a family. So we don't look at the cost. The cost for us is less important than the quality. Um, and that's how we choose the ingredients that we put into the products. So, and yes, we make, our, our product is artisan. It's very small, very small batches, um, very slow process as well. Uh, we haven't sped up the process over the years. We still follow the same process that we had in our kitchen 25 years ago. That's a great answer, isn't it, man? That's a great question. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Is a qu can we keep going with a couple more? We've got a, one more. One more, sorry, for, oh, oh, they're not waving at me. That's fine. Just waving, girls. Hey, mate, how are you? Thank you. You can hang on to that if you like. I'm just wondering, is there any new lines in the, pr in the fries range coming out soon? Well, we've just launched about 20 new products into Australia. So those are not going into Coles and Woolworths because there's very li limited freezer space there. So I think that's important. People, I get like death threats from vegans when a product disappears from the supermarket shelf. And I'm like, I, honestly, we don't decide <laughs> what goes on the shelf. That's, that's the retailer decides that. But these new products will be in the independence trade where there is more space for, for vegan products. Um, and we're launching a range of, uh, it's very exciting, 17 new products in the UK that are in the chiller section, so the fresh section. And in South Africa, we're currently launching a smoothie mix, a vegan smoothie mix, uh, which, is, which has just hit the supermarket shelves. So there's a lot going on at Fry's. Thank you. 